Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be comparing managed Postgres offerings between Google Cloud Platforms, Cloud SQL, and DigitalOcean's Managed DB. So I've been exploring various cloud hosting options recently to decide how best to host my side projects, to optimize for simplicity and cost. I found that Google Cloud Platforms Cloud Run works well for low traffic, mostly static sites. In fact, I hosted this site on Cloud Run for about a dollar a month in 2023. But for more intensive apps that have higher load, and especially those that require data persistence, usually in the form of a database, um, Cloud Run can get quite costly. And so I've previously compared the price of managed container platform as a service offerings um, on Google Cloud and DigitalOcean. And I found that DO was somewhere between two to nine X cheaper, depending on the size of the server and the size of the hardware that you're using. So, so quite a lot of savings. And so in this post, I'm gonna compare uh, their managed database offerings, really focusing on um, Postgres. So I'm a big fan of managed databases and managed platform as a service infrastructure in general, as it removes a lot of the manual overhead involved with setting up and maintaining a server. This is generally gonna be more expensive than running your own server, but I think the time and headspace you get back is usually worth it. Now, Postgres is my database of choice as it scores well across ease of use, performance, and reliability, making it a really solid choice for most applications. Both GCP and DigitalOcean offer managed Postgres instances, so that's what we'll be comparing here. And yes, they also offer others like MySQL, Redis, and stuff like that, but those are out of scope for this post. Managed Postgres pricing. So we'll be comparing prices as displayed at time of writing, um, which is January 12th. These change relatively regularly, probably like once a month, once a quarter. Um, so just be careful if you see this like far in the future, it might not be the same. Um, and to compare, we're gonna be picking the lowest tier of managed Postgres machines that are available on each platform as these are most suitable for smaller projects and the most likely ones I'd probably choose for my new projects because I like optimizing for cost, especially at the beginning. Um, so for DigitalOcean, uh, we're gonna be using their basic regular droplets and these are gonna be shared vCPUs with SSD disks. And you can see the pricing page. Uh, I screenshotted it here so you can see the pricing um, at the time of writing. And an important difference here to, to call out versus GCP is that there's a set amount of configurations you can, you can do on basic regular. And so these configuration options are here and then you can only get certain disk ranges um, here. So it's, it's a finite amount, which is different than, than what we get with GCP. So GCP on the other hand has a ton of configuration options. You can basically um, plug and play and choose whatever ones you want. Obviously a lot of these configuration options like probably don't make sense. Like if you do have really huge um, amounts of storage, like probably picking one vCPU and one RAM isn't gonna like help you very much, um, but that, that is an option. Um, and so we are gonna have to calculate these kind of tiers that DigitalOcean has um, using the kind of a la carte uh, pricing that, that GCP offers. Um, specifically here, we're also gonna be focusing on enterprise edition machines in US East One. GCP has like all sorts of different tiers and pricings based on what region you're in, based on um, how much support you have, based on your committed pricing. And so we're just gonna assume that you're just like an indie hacker, you don't have any of the extra support from from Google Cloud, you're not paying them extra money, you are in the US, you're choosing a reasonable region, um, which is gonna be US East One for most people. Um, and this is just gonna make our calculations way, way simpler and be more like applicable to, to what you would actually be using. One call out here is that these prices are theoretically dedicated vCPUs, but the problem with that is like, is it shared or is it not? A vCPU is virtual, so you don't actually know if you're on the same machine is, is something else. And so when we say vCPUs, when we go to dedicated or shared, if they're not saying that they're a dedicated machine, um, then we're basically going to need to assume that it's a shared machine. Um, and so if it's a shared machine, it's still going to have all the same kinds of problems as like noisy neighbor and stuff. Um, this is important because most of the time when you say dedicated, it's going to be more expensive um, than shared, but you just have to be careful that when they say dedicated, is it actually a dedicated machine? Because if it's not, then it's just basically the same as a shared machine. And so here on Google Cloud, they say that it's a dedicated vCPU, but they don't state whether it's a dedicated machine. And so you just, you know, we, we have to assume it's basically shared. All right, comparing DigitalOcean versus GCP pricing. Um, so here we're going to be comparing and calculating uh, the monthly pricing for the, you know, similar a managed Postgres DB offerings from DO and Google Cloud. And basically what we've done is I've just taken all of the um, finite kind of configuration options that we saw from DigitalOcean. Uh, we put the price here and then based on the prices that we got for enterprise, um, US East One, 
uh, Google Cloud for those same uh, amounts of configuration. We've then calculated it here. And then on the right side, I've tried to make it a little bit easier to understand the relationship by just putting a DO basic over GCP. So in this case, you know, DO costs fifteen dollars, um, GCP costs thirty seven dollars, and so DO is forty percent of the price, which means it's you know sixty percent smaller. And I've gone ahead and done this for most of the configuration options. Um, there are a lot of different kind of gigabyte options, so I've just taken the smallest and largest of the range in DO to give you a better kind of uh, view of it. And basically the, the high level results are that, you know, on the low end, when we're talking about one vCPU, one RAM, and just like 10 gigabytes of storage, um, DigitalOcean costs about $15 and is beating out a GCP's $37 by about 60%. So DO is 40% the cost of GCP. And on the higher end, as we get to like more machines um, or like bigger hardware at six vCPUs and 16 gigabytes RAM and 580 gigabytes of storage, which honestly is like a very large, database, um, like you would have hundreds, probably thousands of customers at this point to need this, unless you're doing like, I guess, file storage, maybe you'd need a ton of storage, but you wouldn't store it in here anyway. So this is like a big machine uh, that most people, even a lot of companies don't need this much machine. Um, this is getting closer to kind of converging at a higher price with DO at about 300 and GCP at 361. Um, so DO is still winning by about 18%, but we are converging a little bit. And my guess is when we go over to the larger machines, DO is either going to be about the same price as GCP or even a little bit higher. Um, but at least for the, the small end, DO definitely wins out quite a bit. For, so for small projects, um, this, this will probably save you a good amount of money. So hopefully you can see this. I know the numbers are kind of small, um, but this is available on my site, which will be linked below if you want to uh, like zoom in or whatever on any of these different prices. All right, next. So I've enjoyed using GCP for my projects over the last few years, but after taking a look at other offerings, I think DO might make more sense for me for my small side projects in the future, where simplicity and cost are more important than scale. Plus, it seems like scaling up is actually pretty feasible performance and price-wise, um, as it kind of showed you that like very large server is still cheaper on, on DO, and that's like pretty good for most applications, like unless you're like hyperscaling or you know, have more than like a thousand customers, it's you're probably not going to need that much. And at that case, you're, you're going to be able to pay the whatever it is, $200 a month. So there's that option to do it in DO. It's not like constraining you. Um, and even if DO starts to constrain you, start to outgrow it, it's pretty easy to migrate out because you're basically just using Postgres under the hood. Everything runs Postgres. Postgres is super reliable, has a lot of great migrations tools. Um, so you're not really locked in either should you decide to, to do something else. So from my point of view, there's like really no downside to trying it. And so I'll probably be trying this uh, in, in the next few weeks. So if you like this post, you might also like why I'm moving from Spellkit to F Sharp, which is a kind of deeper discussion of other technologies and comparing them and, and why I'm thinking about going with F Sharp for my future projects. Um, you might also like Software Monoliths for Scale, which is more comparisons about kind of software architectures and what's actually simpler for more side projects um, and also what tends to scale better. And finally, uh, Simple Interactive Islands with F Sharp and HTMX, which is how I'm thinking about building full stack apps going forward. Again, optimizing for that simplicity um, and scale. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.